Who knows it? By Stephen Leacock Stephen Leacock Stephen P. H. Butler Leacock, a Canadian writer, teacher, political scientist, and humorist was born on December 30, 1869 in Hampshire, England. When he was six the family moved to Canada and settled in Ontario. Studied at Upper Canada College, Toronto. In 1887, he enrolled at University College, University of Toronto. Received doctorate in political science and political economy from University of Chicago. Between 1915 to 1925, he was the best-known English-speaking humorist in the world. Died on March 28, 1944 of throat cancer. Who knows it? Published in model memoirs and other sketches from simple to serious in 1939. Criticizes the growing craze for question-answer system. Indicates the form and mode of questioning during the ages and phases. Summary the essay is in first-person narrative and the author indicates the passion for information. He tells about a radio program he listened on one night where he heard certain questions. The first question was who was King George's great-grandmother and he knew the answer as Queen Victoria. Then the question was how high is Mount Popocatapetl and he does not know the answer. The following questions were how many gallons are there in a cubic foot and who fought the Battle of Actium and he does not know the answer and switched off the radio. Questionnaires, intelligence tests, quiz, puzzles and problems has developed a new passion for information. When others are questioned unknowingly it makes one to check themselves. When in radio it is asked who was the bosom friend of Damon one will check the answer with him as Pythias. Thus the listener too will think of the answer and so questions had made a whole coast of human knowledge. The questions may differ in certain fields like history or poetry. He states the examples of questions in history as follows. Where was General Burgoyne defeated? In what year was America discovered? Who was Vasco da Gama? Who were Sumerians? Then he states the questions from poetry as follows. The curfew tolls the knell of what? The boy stood on the burning deck what boy? The shades of night were doing what? While such questions were asked one will feel that he is getting a grip on literature. At times the questions will be based on mathematics. Information questionnaire is another form used in business. He criticizes that this way of questions has made to measure a person to be recruited for a job. Before 50 years the recommendation from an academic authority will state the character and dedication of a person to get a job. At present it has changed and the person is measured with some printed forms of questions. This asks for the percentage of the behavior of a person. After having the evaluation like this the intelligence test will be applied directly to the person to measure his human capacity. This way of measuring is not only in business but it spread to army and all the professions. He criticizes that even for a wedding the bride is tested with a psychological test by letting him to the psychological laboratory. The author considers only by talking to a person is the best way to know the person and all the tests are pure nonsense. He indicates James of Bret Hart who questioned 70 years ago that whether this way is a failure of civilization. The Greeks and Romans complained about it and he states that his own nation is pretending Western civilization which will lead to a world chaos. As humans are behind questions the mind runs to meaningless intellectuality. The purpose is replaced by purposeless capacity just like machines with steel fingers replace the humans. But he thinks that this too will pass as the world is passing and the question and answer mentality is also on its passing phase. Facts and fancy has divided humans as Archimedes was deeply buried in thought and Omar Khayyam in imagination. Some read romances while other prefer almanac but humans have the desire to escape from the consciousness. He states about the statistical data which provides enough information about a nation, its people, and also about the universe and stars. He is in an opinion that the same was there in the early age with huge exaggerations and they have done it with lies and at present it is done with statistics. The present passion for puzzle questions is nothing new and it is as old as humanity and might have had it in Babylon. It is easy to have entertainment with the puzzle and one will be thinking of the answer for long until he get it. He states about the jigsaw puzzles from China which appeared 4000 years ago, and mathematical puzzle from Greeks, and crossword or catchword during the Middle Ages. 
The word puzzle and all the puzzles stated above were there from the beginnings of human thought. He indicates the wonderful statue of primitive man made by French sculptor Rodin with a constructive thought. If anyone is questioned about the American War of 1898 and the story of King Solomon and the undistributed baby they are able to answer it. So it can be told that the tests are as old as human intelligence. The growing craze of tests and questions are all old stuff and at present they appear again in new forms that suits the ideas of humans. He concludes by stating to turn on the radio to hear Professor Noet asking about Christopher Columbus. For more videos, like, share, subscribe. Thank you.